Caesar here, back again with another video. This time, as you can see, we are on uh, Kotaku's site, and apparently there was some, well, great news that I actually recently just realized here. Now, you, as you can see as a title, I guess you probably think it's like, it's, it's, is it actually a real story or not? Let's just now find out, I guess. So first, you can see here that Sega Beans blockchain plans calls for free-to-play games boring. Huh. Free-to-play games boring, huh? I wonder why is it so hmm, familiar, I guess. So the action in play-to-earn games is boring. What is the point if games are no fun? So yes, you can see here, there's just another screenshot from Sega. Yeah, nothing much, I guess. Now, but the most important thing is this part, I guess. In April 2021, the height of Web3 mania, Sega was one of the biggest companies to crash to the future, to the scam that was play to earn. Now, just two years later, and after the whatever ASS has completely fallen out of the market, yep, it literally just tumbles in like 2022 and beyond, I guess. Sega has had a change of heart. So, of course, by that time, I remember there was an article that they, they actually wrote to, like, this against Sega to, like, because they are selling, like, the NFT stuff. So, yeah, I guess that's something you can probably go back and watch. But, you know, everybody just thought, oh, well, I guess this is what all big corporations does anyways to, like, you know, earn a lot of money by selling NFTs. So, however, this time around, it's a bit different. Those plans are mostly done for in an interview with Bloomberg. So Sega's co-chief operating officer, Suzy Utsumi, has said that the company will now withhold its biggest franchises from third-party blockchain games projects to avoid devaluing its content. And will also be shelving plans to develop its own games in that genre, at least for now. We are looking into whether this technology is really going to take off in this industry after all. Yup, I am really glad Sega literally is just gauging by announcing that all crappy, you know, NFT thing, you know. So Usumi told the site, adding that while its biggest franchises are off the table, the lesser known properties like Three Kingdoms and Virtual Fighter will be seeing, still seeing some NFT timings avoid from third party uh, providers, I guess. So, well, the Three Kingdoms stuff and the Virtual Fighters is all mostly on arcades anyways, but yeah, they are not exactly like uh, extremely valuable IPs, I suppose. So yeah, it's okay for them to have NFT timings. It's all right. And of course, there is this one small place here that you probably have missed here. Look at this one quote here. His best quote, however, is when he bluntly says that the action in play to earn games is boring. What's the point of if games are no fun? Uh, my guy, we were telling you that in 2021. Glad you finally came around. Now that... <laughs> the action in play to earn games is boring. What is the... What the point... What's the point if the games are no fun? That is like the most important phrase that they somehow didn't really highlight until the end. And this literally debunks the whole of like Sega creating the whole, you know, super game and all of that. The whole super game thing and a project is going to involve NFTs and stuff because they have signed an agreement with a company here like uh, Double Jump, Tokyo stuff, you know. But yeah, apparently they are going to like, uh, you know, they're going to bench that whole idea. At one point, I just say, hey, that's pretty good. And this is actually generally a very, very great news, I guess. As you can see here, a lot of like people are actually responding about this whole NFT argument about oh this play to earn and play to win is like uh is literally coexisting. 
I really like this one message here, however, the one comment from this uh, uh, person here who is called Ray Fighter. Uh, the typo in the title is kind of amusing because free-to-play games and play-to-earn games have this many in things in common, yet so very much not at all the same things. Yeah, apparently the, the title that you see just now is a typo. I guess they were maybe going to title it as play-to-earn instead of free-to-play games are boring, but never mind. But, but the fact is that you can see that here they say, Free to play games, no, no, we are not pay to win. We are really not pay no attention to all the gray areas that we are sliding into all the time. While pay to earn games actually are like lol, everything is so freaking pay to win, but you totally make it, rich guy. Really, you just need to spend a little bit more. Yep, that is the <laughs> so basically pay to earn is literally free to play, but like monetized to high hell i guess because yeah it's all about the pay to win the more money you chip in the more advantage you get in the game that has this pay to earn mechanic stuff so but free to play has a lot of like gray area like for example the game is free but the cost the cosmetics and the monetization and the convenience stuff is probably going to cost more than a triple a game so that is all the gray areas that is technically very very similar to the idea of like uh, pay to earn games however you know sega only have like one free to play game that i think everybody is currently you know know of it that is totally extremely free to play friendly and has a very very little like or little to none pay to win stuff that actually can destroy the game using money. So it this is like a very, very ironic title by Kotaku because this F2P word is supposed to be like pay to earn, I guess, but they I guess they typo it wrongly. But regardless, I think Sega doing this is for the better. They have seen like great sales for their single player games. They have seen the success of the whole Yakuza series. The Sonic titles are able to sell off extremely well as well. Uh, right after Sonic Frontiers and the whole Sonic movies doing very well in the box office, they realized that, hey, you know, NFT is probably not going to earn us as much as our core franchises. That's why they went ahead and do a lot of, like, uh, put a lot of funds into single-player games and a lot more marketing to cover all those games instead of like the, the their live services i guess so but still i do hope since they now bench the whole uh, super game right i just wish they put more funding and uh, staff and everything into their free-to-play games as well because yeah sega is doing very well in single player games but not for their live service games as well, especially PSO2 New Genesis. So, well, with this good news, I guess we can get a sliver of hope that the game is going to get a little bit better in the future. But only time will tell. So that is the only news I wanted to like, you know, share with everybody here. Uh, something that's related to Sega, which is the parent company that owns the whole Fantasy Star franchise. That's why I wanted to cover this. Hopefully, they are able to see the value in their core IPs, and I'm really glad that Fantasy Star is not uh, converted into an NFT kind of a thing, I guess. So, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say this once. This is probably like one of the best things that Sega decided to do of all things you know it, they had to actually be announced in like the whole kotaku article but yeah whatever this is a big w i guess for sega so that's all for today and i hope you guys enjoy this great news sayonara